Hello, welcome to a lesson on adverbs. As you can see, I am smartly dressed today. Smartly dressed. There's an adverb adjective collocation or an adverb participle collocation, which we'll deal with in a moment. But first of all, I just want to talk about two simple sentences. This is the basics of adverbs. He speaks good English. This is correct, okay? Because we use adjective before the noun to describe the noun. So he speaks good English, that's correct. But it is not correct to say he speaks English good. Good shouldn't go at the end of the sentence there. It should be he speaks English well. It must be well. Because in English we use noun and then the adverb at the end and the adverb at the end describes speaking English, okay? Um, so, he speaks English good is incorrect. Quite often people will, will say that. It's quite a common mistake. Now, we're going to talk about the position of adverbs. And the thir first thing I want to say is that when you have an adverb participle or adverb adjective collocation, when adverbs collocate with adjectives or participles, then they go together. For example, smartly dressed, which is I, what I said at the beginning. I am a little bit smartly dressed today. It doesn't happen very often, but today I am smartly dressed. Now, that describes dressed, smartly describes how I'm dressed. And so when the adverbs collocate with adjectives or participles, keep them together. Don't put them at the end of the sentence or in the middle. Keep them right next to the adjective uh, reasonably cheap, utterly ridiculous, deeply shocked. All of these adverb collocations, by the way, I deal with in a series of videos, adv advanced lessons, looking at some adverb collocations. So please watch that lesson if you're interested in this topic. Um, okay, um, so you have these ones which are all adjectives, cheap, ridiculous, shocked and obvious. And here are the adverbs which collocate with them, patently obvious, really obvious. Um, but you could also do it with participles, which are basically adjectives. Um, badly organised, severely wounded, well known. So you shouldn't split those up. They will always go together. Seriously injured. Yeah? It seriously describes the injured, so they must go together. And I think that's quite intuitive, and it's what you would expect. And so number one is nothing to worry about, but what is hard is learning all the collocations. And so please go to my series of lessons about that if you want to learn some of those collocations. Um, second type of adverb, which I'm going to look at, is adverbs of manner. And this is how something is done. Now, obviously we're not dealing now with uh, adverbs which collocate, um, because if we were, then they would go together with the adjective or participle which they describe. But we're d dealing with adverbs of manner which are describing a verb and noun phrase, basically. They go after the verb and noun which it describes. Now, sometimes there won't be a noun, there will just be a verb. He drives very slowly, for example. You cannot put very slowly earlier at the start or after he. It's not possible. It must go after the verb which he, it describes. And adverbs of manner, they always go after these verbs which they describe. So they go before adjectives and participles which they describe, but they go after verbs or verb and nouns, a verb and noun phrases which they describe. So she plays the piano. How does she play the piano? Beautifully. He smokes. How does he smoke? Heavily. Um, and it just must go after that verb or verb and noun that it describes. Okay? Now let's deal with another type of adverb which I've called comment adverbs. They make a comment about the whole sentence. And so these are like ideally, luckily, clearly, obviously. These go at the start. We put them right at the start and it describes the whole sentence. Um, they can actually go at the end as well. Um, but not in the middle for these general comments, because this ideally is referring to the whole clause. We should have booked a table, ideally. And so the whole, when you're trying to describe the whole clause, put it before or afterwards. Again, I think this is quite intuitive. Um, so, comment adverbs go at the start or end. I should put that really, because they can. They can go, we should have booked a table, comma, ideally but usually at the start. Okay, number four, adverbs of frequency. 
and many other adverbs, okay? So not just adverbs of frequency, but many, many adverbs, and you just have to learn which ones are like this. I've given you a little list here, but you'll learn them as, as you see them in sentences. Many adverbs go after to be, after the modal verb, after the auxiliary verb, but they go before the main verb. Okay, so here are my examples. Are they definitely coming? It's after to be, but it's before the main verb. He didn't even say goodbye. It's after didn't, but before the main verb. Say, I have often thought of moving house. It's after the auxiliary, but before the main verb. He has rarely visited. It's after the auxiliary, but before the main verb. And he's always going on about himself. Yeah, perhaps he's a little bit arrogant. It's after to be. Yeah, there's to be. He is. And then there's the main verb going. Um, now, a lot of different adverbs fall into this group. I've just written some here. Also, already, all, both, probably, just. Now, many of those are not adverbs of frequency. I mean, all and both, they don't deal with frequency but they still go in this position. And you just have to learn some of these adverbs which go in certain positions. I mean, already always goes there, but a very similar adverb, yet, always goes at the end. And so, yet at the end. Um, you just have to learn them sometimes. Okay? Um, now, there's another complication with adverbs that does lead to mistakes, and that's the difference between words which look very similar. Um, so, late and lately, they are different. Yeah, um, I think a lot of people mix these up. Late means not on time, yeah? So, for example, he arrived late. Let me do this in red, because they're going to be my examples. I hope you can all see it clearly. Um, he arrived to work late. He was late for work, yeah, would be the most obvious one. He was late for work. But then, lately is not connected with punctuality. It's only connected with what's happened in the last few days or the last few weeks. Lately is the same as recently, which is another good adverb. And both of them are present perfect signal words. They don't have to be used in present perfect, but they very often are because they refer to a period of time which is unfinished, it's still true now, so it's worth remembering. Um, so, I haven't seen him lately, for example. I haven't seen him lately. So please remember that lately is very different for, from late. Um, the other two which people mix up is hard and hardly. Um, hard means difficult, yeah? Hard means difficult. Hardly means barely. So, you can say he works very hard. But you could also say, um, if perhaps you wear glasses, your vision isn't very good, you can say, I can hardly see the board, Dave. Can you make your writing a bit bigger or something like that? I can hardly see the board. I can barely see the board. Yeah, it means with great difficulty. Hardly. And please remember there's another good adverb of frequency here, hardly ever, which also goes after to be in the modal and auxiliary, but before the main verb. And hardly ever means almost never. That's all it means, almost never. Um, okay, also near and nearly. Near is close. I, he lives close to me. He lives near me. Yeah, he lives in the, the, a, a street which is very near me. He lives near me. Excuse me. He lives near me. It's not the same as nearly, which is almost. Yeah, so for example, um, I nearly fell off my bike. I almost fell off my bike. Yeah, that's what it means. I nearly fell off my bike. I almost fell off my bike. Okay, and lastly, in the end and at the end, they are adverbial expressions. Um, in the end means finally. Okay, finally or eventually. Yeah, after a long time. At the end means at the last part of, so at the end of the lesson, at the end of the book. 
at the end of the film. At the end is nearly always at the end of something. Nearly always at the end of something. Okay, I hope those two are clear as well. Um, so that's a lot of information about adverbs. There's many other things I could talk about if I wanted to. I could talk about inversion, negative adverbials. We could, for example, put this rarely at the beginning and say rarely has he visited um, because it's a negative adverbial. But if you're interested in that kind of information, please watch my video on inversion where I go into that in great detail. Um, so if you have any questions about this grammar, please put them under the video. I'll try my best to answer them. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you all soon. Thanks for watching.